Our Jets players, well, more in particularly one Jets player, that being Sauce Gardner, still sort of upset or even hurt that Odell Beckham Jr. ended up choosing the Baltimore Ravens over the Jets. Well, that, that's what I thought when I saw the headline of this article on Pro Football Talk, because I looked at it. It says Sauce Gardner says OBJ wanted to play for the Jets and that he planned to wear number seven there. And I'm like, man, like I'm thinking, what what my dog Elsa tell you? Let it go. Let it go. That, that happened, I think, over a month ago. And Odell Beckham Jr., he got all situated with the Ravens now. And the Jets, they, they got Aaron Rodgers after that. And, of course, they made a plethora of moves this offseason. So I'm thinking, man, why is he still talking about this? But then, context. Context. I went to the actual article straight from SI.com, and it gave me a different viewpoint. And then even before I even went to the article, and we're going to read that excerpt from it in a little bit. But before I even went to the article, I was thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Even if Sauce was upset over this or even hurt about it, I can't be mad at that. I, I can't be mad at that at all because I'm sure he's thinking about the all the what could have been. What he may even feel should have been. The reason I say I can't be upset about it is because I've been there. <laughs> We've been there as Ravens fans. You know, we're usually on the opposite end of this whole thing. We're usually the team where we're talking about, oh man, we could have had this receiver. Oh man, he, he could have signed with the Ravens. Oh man, what could have been if we would have got him too? Oh man, that would have been nice. But for this once, we won. We won. But let's look at the excerpt from the article and what sauce had been talking about just to give you all context he was talking about the the change the change in just the vibe the change in culture from even when he was in, in Cincinnati and now the change in culture with the New York Jets and it says um, Gardner spent this offseason recruiting more help uh, one of his primary targets was Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, the uh, iconoclast wide receiver who has struggled with injuries over the past three seasons. Still, Beckham is one of the most famous players in the NFL. Sauce has him on speed dial. So that part, uh, it was where Sauce was talking about, um, the article brought up how he just couldn't imagine how he would be in contact with these different NFL players, and not just any NFL players, but different NFL players of high status. Guys that are like that, guys that are really known and respected throughout the league. So that's what he was referring to about him being on speed dial. But it says, while Beckham eventually signed with the Ravens for a one-year contract worth up to $18 million, Gardner insists the Jets were in the conversation for his services. And, and yeah, that's something that's been widely reported, that the Jets were right there talking to Odell Beckham Jr. Y'all know, I said it on here. I said it on here that, I thought that he was going to end up choosing the Jets. If, if it was between the Jets and the Ravens, like it was, I was a thousand percent sure Odell Beckham Jr. was choosing the Jets. Reason being, because both, both teams, they didn't have their quarterback at the time. But it was known around the league, or everybody knew that it was only a matter of time. Because this was after the official announcement from Aaron Rodgers that he wanted to go to the Jets. But it, we knew it was only a matter of time before that trade happened. Now, of course, there was still some possibility that something could go wrong, that the Packers could be like, ah, you know what, never mind. Or the Jets might have been like, ah, you know what, this is too much or whatnot. But it ended up happening. Now, I, I think there was even more uncertainty when it came to Lamar Jackson and the Ravens and what was going to happen there. Because, again, with that, I thought, oh, man, it wasn't looking good this offseason to me. I thought it was looking like Lamar was going to be out of here and that this relationship between the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson was not going to end well. But I'm very happy, extremely happy to have been wrong about both Lamar Jackson and Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, <laughs> I love being wrong about that type of stuff. I love it. I, I, I love it because it's nice when Ravens give you a nice little surprise. Um, so shout out to them for the way they really turned around this offseason. But let's continue. Gardner said, uh, Odell, he wanted to play here, Gardner says. It was to the point where he was picking his jersey. He was telling me like, hey, ask so-and-so if I can get the jersey number I want. He was going to wear number seven. So again, it, it, it seems like 
there is still a little bit of pain with this one because he seems to have developed a relationship with Odell Beckham Jr. Seems like he, he may be cool, extra cool with Odell Beckham Jr. So stuff like that hurts. It's like if you're working at a job and you just recently started this job and you love it, you love it. And you know somebody that's been in this line of business for a little while and they made some stuff happen. They, they done made some stuff happen. They may have broke some records and whatnot at this company, but they, they had, they've done pretty good for themselves and they are well established in, in the company or in this line of work. But you're like, hey, it's, it's an opening at, at my company. You, you, you want to come, come work with us too? And your friend is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to come work there too. I want to come work with you. you, you you're my guy. You know, I got love for you, man. Hey, if we work together, hey, this thing could go crazy, man. This thing could go crazy. We could get the job done, but we could have fun in the process. So then you're like, all right, hey, let me put you up. Let me, let, me, let me get you in touch with my manager. Then he'll get you in touch with the hiring manager, and we'll set this whole thing up. So you do that, and you give your friend, your friend gets that interview. And you're like, oh, yes, let's go. And then on top of that, your friend doesn't just get the interview. Your manager tells you, hey, we're interested in hiring your friend. And you're like, yes, come on, baby. And then maybe they even send your friend an offer letter. And you're like, hey, we, no, no, no. Before the offer letter, the, your, your, the manager is like, hey, we're going to bring your friend in for a second interview. We, we, we had the phone interview with him. It was cool. But we want to bring him in for an in-person interview. You know that second interview? That's, that's the one right there. If you get the second interview, your foot is more than halfway in the door a lot of times. So it's like, all right, you all hyped because your friend, is, your friend getting ready to come in. And you're like, oh, your friend told you that he was interested. And your friend even told you, hey, this is the cubicle that I want. Make sure nobody's sitting there because that, that, that's the one that I want. But then at the last second, another company swoops in and gives your friend an offer that's more than three times what it was expected that your company was going to offer your friend. Because it's, it's been reported, we ain't seen nothing official official, but it's been reported that the Jets offer for Odell Beckham Jr. was going to be around like $5 million. But the Ravens, their offer was $18 million for one year. And on top of that, 15 mil guaranteed. So you can even forget about the 18 mil. 15 mil. Like guaranteed. 15 mil for one year. So this other company, they offered your friend a deal that not that he couldn't refuse, but pretty much that he couldn't refuse. So that would hurt. That, that, that would hurt. That, that would have you upset. And that would have you feeling like, oh, man. What could have been? So that's why I'm not mad at, at, at Sauce Gardner at all for however he feels about the situation. Whether he's hurt, whether he's upset, whether it's frustrating, whether it, it just bothers him thinking about, oh, man, we could have had Odell Beckham Jr. Because from everything that was reported on, it seemed like that was the direction that it was heading in. It seemed like things were getting really close to that point, it's, it's, especially when it was announced that Odell Beckham Jr. was scheduled to visit with the New York Jets on that Monday. But then the Ravens said, hey, no, 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 cancel your flight. So I, I, I feel for Sauce Gardner, but as a Raven fan, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for us. But again, I, I get it. I get it from both points of view, um, how this could make somebody feel. So anyway, um, no, right, right after that in the article, you talked about uh, I'm texting guys like Aaron Rodgers. Feel me? I never thought I'd be texting guys like that. So again, just reminding you about the, the, the context uh, where, again, he, he talked about the, the culture changes uh, for the last two teams he's played at, obviously with the, the Cincinnati and then now with the Jets, uh, but then talked about just being in communication with guys in the league now that are established and, and that are like that and how things are just so much different. But he talked about how he's just grateful for everything. Uh, he's grateful for the opportunity. He, he is grateful for just how things are going, and he's very happy. Uh, so shout out to Sauce Gardner because that, that boy can play. Boy, that boy can play, man. Uh, but anyway, team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. And, hey, just like Odell Beckham Jr. told the Jets when it came to his meeting with them, he said, sorry, y'all boys, but I'm out.